Hello, my name is Nelson James and I'm a researcher at the National Renewable Energy Lab. And today I'll be joined by Dr. Federica Brown from the U.S. Department of Energy's Building Technology Office to discuss thermal energy storage in buildings. In this presentation, we will take a look at the motivations behind pursuing energy storage and the appeal of thermally based approaches. We will then delve deeper into how thermal energy storage works. A use case will be presented highlighting the benefits of thermal energy storage, and we will conclude with future opportunities that exist for thermal energy storage in buildings. Traditionally, the U.S. electric grid was set up to have centralized generation facilities deliver power to users spread out over relatively large areas. While this paradigm has served the nation's needs for much of its history, radical changes are underway to the ways in which we generate and deliver power. Distributed energy resources like solar PV and electric vehicles are becoming more ubiquitous, and as such, electrical power generation will have increased variability both temporarily and spatially. The grid of the future will need to manage energy resources so that energy is available on demand and can be stored for later when not needed. As the primary consumers of electricity in the nation, building has, buildings have the opportunity to be active participants in balancing our electrical infrastructure. Energy storage technologies can bolster and stabilize the U.S. grid by providing load leveling, peak reduction, backup power, and other management services. Buildings utilize energy for a wide variety of end-use services. During the peak electrical demand periods of the summer months, much of that energy is devoted to maintaining thermal comfort through air conditioning. Storing energy to meet these large demands can become increasingly important as we consider energy delivery in the context of renewable generation profiles that vary over the course of the day. One option would be to store solar energy in a battery during the hours of greatest solar generation and then use that solar energy to power cooling systems after the sun sets. Another option would be to freeze or chill a storage medium when solar energy is plentiful and then use that stored cooling capacity to meet loads during peak energy usage hours. Choosing to store energy thermally as opposed to electrochemically in batteries can offer a number of advantages such as lower material costs, likely longer cycle lives, and ability to downsize other mechanical equipment used for space conditioning. When considering a thermal energy storage system, you should take into account the following characteristics. Storage capacity, power, efficiency, storage period, charge and discharge time, and cost. Storage capacity is defined as the energy stored in the system, and this depends on the storage process, the medium, and the size of the system. Power is defined as how fast the energy stored in the system can be discharged and charged, where efficiency is the ratio of the energy provided to the user to the energy needed to charge the storage system. It accounts for the energy loss during the storage period and the charging discharging cycle. The storage period is defined as how the energy is stored and the length of time that the energy lasts, whether that be hours, days, weeks, or months for seasonal storage. Charge and discharge time refers to how much time is needed to charge, discharge the system. And cost refers to either the capacity or power of the storage system and depends on the capital and operation cost of cost of the storage equipment and its lifetime. When designing an energy storage system, the main requirements that should be considered are high energy density in the storage material, which is the storage capacity that was referred to in the previous slide. There also must be good heat transfer between the heat transfer fluid and the storage material. Mechanical and chemical stability of the storage material is an important requirement because it assists in determining the performance and suitability of the storage material's ability to store energy over a specified time period. There must be compatibility between the storage material and the container material to prevent issues such as corrosion that would reduce the performance of your storage system. In terms of reversibility of a number of cycles, you're looking at charging, discharging without loss in performance and storage capacity over many cycles. With low thermal losses during the storage period, 
you will have a more efficient system. And the last thing to consider would be ease of control. There are three methods for thermal energy storage at temperatures ranging from minus 40 degrees Celsius to more than 400 degrees Celsius. Those are sensible heat, latent heat, and thermochemical heat storage associated with chemical reactions. The choice of the storage medium depends on the nature of the process. For example, for water heating, energy storage as sensible heat of stored water is logical. Here we show typical materials used in sensible heat thermal energy storage systems. Sensible heat storage is the simplest thermal energy storage method. Heating or cooling of a liquid or a solid storage medium occurs. Notice that these materials vary widely in density, specific heat, and volumetric thermal capacity values. Water is the cheapest option for sensible heat test systems, making it the most popular commercial heat storage medium. It has a number of residential and industrial applications. Latent heat storage materials are also known as phase change materials, and this is due to their property of releasing or absorbing energy with a change in physical state. The use of a latent heat system using phase change materials is an effective way of storing thermal energy and has the advantages of high energy storage density and the isothermal nature of the storage process. The main advantage of using latent heat storage over sensible heat storage is the capacity of storing heat at almost similar temperature ranges. The following example is shown to help viewers understand the general operation of a thermal energy storage system for cooling applications. First, we have a business as usual case. Here, no thermal energy storage is used. During the morning and evening hours when it is cooler, the HVAC system can operate at lower loads in order to maintain thermal comfort. These off-peak hours are generally associated with lower electricity costs and lower carbon intensity on the electrical grid. So relative to total hours of HVAC operation, this period has lower carbon emissions and costs related to space cooling. Next, we have peak period operation. At this time, the demands on the electrical grid are at their highest. In order to maintain adequate electrical supply, grid operators turn on less efficient peaker plants. This means that the energy used at this time has increased carbon emissions relative to other periods of the day. The cost of electricity for consumers can also be notably higher during these periods. At the same time, rising temperatures during the day mean that the HVAC system needs to consume even more power and operate at even higher loads. Business as usual space cooling operation results in high carbon emissions and costs for end users during this peak periods of the day relative to other hours of operation. Thermal energy storage can help to reduce some of these undesirable effects. When a thermal energy storage system is present, the HVAC plant will charge the system during periods of low cooling demand. Naturally, greater amounts of electricity will be required to charge the system during these periods relative to the business as usual case. This is because the HVAC unit will not only have to provide cooling to the building as usual, but also cool the storage medium. As a result, more electricity will be consumed during these off-peak hours, but this energy generally comes at a lower cost and relatively lower carbon intensities when you compare it to the peak periods during the day. During peak hours, the value of thermal energy storage becomes truly apparent. As the demands on the electrical grid reach their peak, the cooling requirements on the building can be supplied primarily from the thermal energy storage system. Hence, the consumer is able to avoid the high cost of electricity during these periods, as well as the carbon emissions associated with this electricity use. The use of a thermal energy storage system also means that the size of the HVAC plant can be reduced. Previously, the HVAC system was required to solely provide the peak cooling load. But now, in conjunction with the storage unit, the HVAC system may only be required to provide reduced supplemental cooling during peak periods. The addition of thermal energy storage has the potential to reduce carbon emissions and save on utility charges at a lower relative cost to battery systems. As previously mentioned, thermal energy storage can take many forms. Water and ice have been the primary forms of thermal energy storage in buildings for decades. 
The future of thermal energy storage will incorporate a variety of technological approaches to reduce the footprint and inconvenience of storage systems, while also enhancing their effectiveness to shift thermal loads and maintain occupant comfort. Thermal energy storage materials that can be incorporated into the building envelope can allow for large volumes of storage material to be added without taking up valuable floor space. Additionally, research is underway to increase the controllability of thermal energy storage devices. More precise control over when and how thermal energy storage media are charged and discharged can lead to improved load delivery and occupant comfort. Thermal switches analogous to electrical switches are being developed for the next generation of thermal storage control. The improved integration of thermal energy storage with other building systems and equipment can lead to enhanced functionality and value for building occupants. Future, energy, future thermal energy storage materials will need to be low cost and environmentally friendly. Here potentially lies one of the greatest advantages of thermally based energy storage over traditional electrochemical methods. Many thermal storage materials can be produced at price, lower prices than batteries and generally don't require critical materials such as cobalt. As energy storage technologies continue to evolve, Thermally based storage methods have the potential to play a crucial role in managing energy usage in the future. In conclusion, energy storage has attracted a lot of attention in the built environment and is only expected to become more important as we transition to a more renewable future. Thermal energy storage is appealing due to the large amount of building loads that are thermally based. When designing thermal energy storage systems, one wants to keep in mind factors such as high energy density, low cost, and chemical and mechanical stability. One scenario in which thermal energy storage systems truly shine is in the reducing of peak cooling loads. By shifting cooling energy requirements to non-peak hours, building owners and operators can save money on utility expenses as well as reduce carbon emissions associated with cooling. Currently, hot water, chilled water, and ice storage make up the majority of thermal energy storage installations in buildings. In the future, novel materials and systems will be developed to better support the management of energy resources in buildings. Building-based thermal energy storage is an exciting field that contains many aspects that we were not able to touch on in this current presentation. If you're curious about learning more about current activities and the future of thermal energy storage in buildings, please check out the following links.